All right, so let's go over number three and also number four goes with it. All right, so here we have a cartoon of a protein. It's got um, three transmembrane regions, one, two, and three. And then we've got in between these regions are labeled X, Y, and Z. Now we have an arrow that's indicating where a, a signal peptidase would act. And so that's telling us that that region one is the signal peptide. And we know that the signal peptide is going to get inserted first. So here we have our translocator, right? And we have the region one getting inserted, and it's getting inserted with the N terminus facing out, right? So this is <clears throat> the lumen of the ER, all right? And we have um, the N, N region, N terminus is facing out into the cytosol. So next, after that, we have the protein continues to be synthesized until uh, the next transmembrane region is, she, is uh, found. So that stop transfer sequence two, right? And so now we've got, as of right now, we've got this X region in the lumen of the side of the ER. Right? Now for this first part, the reason that I knew that it inserts in this way is this, that's the way it's shown in the book. So if you look at examples in the book, we always have the first region um, is kind of facing out like that. So what happens next? All right, <clears throat> so over here, we've got our second, our first and our second transmembrane spanning regions are in the translocator, and here comes the third, right? So it's just going to loop back and forth and back and forth, as you can see in this example, right? So we have one, two, and three. <clears throat> we've got the X region inside the lumen, and we've got the Y region in the cytosol. And then the Z region is back into the lumen of the ER again. But we're not done yet, right? We know that the signal peptidase is going to act right here, right? That is where our signal peptidase is going to act. So that is going to be cleaved right there. The translocator is going to let go of this protein. And that transmembrane region 1 is just going to kind of float away. So we're going to have something that looks like this, right? That transmembrane region 1 floated off and it released the end terminus end of that protein, and it happens to be in the lumen of the ER. All right, so we've got facing into the lumen, we've got the X and the Z regions, and then facing into the cytosol, we have the Y. All right. So try doing this with different types of um, examples of different numbers of transmembrane regions and see what kind of shapes you get. There are actually proteins that are seven transmembrane proteins that we'll talk about in one of the following chapters when we talk about signaling. Right. So let's move on to question. So in question three, it says, where will region Y be? We know that it is going to be in the cytoplasm. Now let's talk about number four. So we have a protein that is normally cytosolic and gets a signal sequence added to it, and that signal sequence codes for the endoplasmic reticulum. What does that mean? It means that that protein, when it gets made, instead of just being released into the cytoplasm, it's going to be inserted into the ER. Right. Let's look at B. You change the hydrophobic amino acids in an ER signal sequence into charged amino acids. So if you remember, we had a table that showed different examples of signal peptides. Um, the signal sequence, um, depending on what amino acids are in that sequence, will determine kind of the properties. And those properties help to direct these proteins to different organelles. 
And so if you uh, look, you can see that the ER signal sequence tends to be mostly composed of hydrophobic amino acids. And so if you change it to charged amino acids, that protein's definitely not going to get into the uh, endoplasmic reticulum, right? Because structure determines function. Where it would end up, who knows, right? And in C, if you change the hydrophobic amino acids in an ER signal sequence into other hydrophobic amino acids, what would happen? This is a bit of an open-ended question. So it could be okay. Maybe if you change only one or two amino acids, the protein will still go to the ER, but maybe it won't, right? And then lastly, you move the N-terminal ER signal sequence to the C-terminal end of the protein. So let's look at number three, and let's try doing that and see what happens, all right? So let me get back to the camera so I can see what I'm doing. All right. So we have here our example sequence from before, except now we have on the C terminus, we have our region one with the uh, signal, right? And what's gonna happen? So here we have it inserting region one with the C terminus facing out. We've got region two coming in, or sorry, region three, right? And then lastly, we have region four, uh, region two coming in, Right. So in this case, what we have is um, the protein is basically flipped, right, kind of horizontally. Right. So um, basically what I'm trying to get at with that problem is just that the orientation of that signal peptide plays a role in how that protein gets inserted into the membrane. All right.